Hello Lana. Welcome to our final lesson. That is cell specialization, tissues, organs, and organ systems. How or what do you understand by the term cell specialization? Cell specialization is the process by which newly formed cells undergo structural changes to perform specific functions. Example, palisade cells. These ones have many chloroplasts for photosynthesis that trap light energy for photosynthesis. You can see this is a palisade structure with the numerous cells of chloroplasts. We have the red blood cell, which are biconcave in shape and lack nucleus, but contain hemoglobin to transport oxygen. So this hemoglobin is the pigment that gives blood the red color and combined with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin and that is the form in which oxygen is transported in our bodies. So you can see it is biconcave. It has something like a depression that is the biconcave shape. And then it has uh, oxygen diffusing from it to the tissues as well as nutrients. So on the other hand, carbon peroxide and metabolic wastes from our cells diffuse to the blood or to the red blood cells to be transported uh, to the lungs for removal. The other specialized cell is the sperm cell, which has a tail for propulsion or forward uh, push to reach the egg or the ovum. It also contains many mitochondria to provide energy for, for propulsion. At the head or the tip, there is acrosome which contains lytic enzyme. The lytic enzyme digests the membrane of the ova to allow entry of the sperm. So this is the acrosome you are talking about, having lytic enzymes to digest the wall of the ova. You can see the mitochondria are numerous here. And then the tail that is to allow it to prop, uh, swim forward. We have the root hair cell, which has an extension or projection called the root hair. The root hair increases the surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts from the soil. This is the root hair cell. We have the cell wall of the plant, the nucleus the cytoplasm, this is the vacuole, then, so this is basically the root itself, but has the root hair cell. This root hair cell contains the root hair, that is the projection. That it increases the surface area for absorption of water from the soil. Then we have the nerve cell. Uh, which is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system in animals and has extensions called axon and dendrites on their cell bodies to allow transmission of impulse. An impulse is a electrical, uh, electrical signal or just information. For example, uh, when one is burnt uh, after touching or upon touching a hot pan. So that pain from the hot pan is the impulse. So these axon and dendrites transport or transmit the impulse, which is the pain to the brain. And the brain through these extensions again uh, of the nerve cell, then of the motor neuron then does 
sends information to the muscles of the hand, hand uh, for you to drop the pan immediately. This is the nerve cell, the dendrite and the axon. We have the white blood cells which have large nuclei and can change their shape. So when there is a wound, the white blood cells change their shape and surround that point to fight the pathogens that are likely to cause the disease. They exhibit amoeboid movement and protect the body against infections by destroying disease-causing microorganisms through antibody production or the process of phagocytosis. So we shall learn about antibodies in form two, but in summary, the, the body has immune system and antibodies are produced in correspondence to the antigens or the uh, pathogens or microorganisms that want to cause infections in our bodies. The other one is the muscle cell. They contain contractile fibrils that contract and relax to bring about movement. We move to tissues. And a tissue is a collection of cells of similar type that are specialized to perform the same function. So similar cells form a tissue what are the tissue types in animals? We have epithelial tissue, and it is a thin continuous layer of cells for lining and protection of internal and external surfaces. We have the skeletal muscle tissue. So this epithelial tissue is found on the surfaces of parts like the lungs and even the mouth. So that is, there is a thin layer uh, covering the cells. The skeletal muscle is a bundle or sheets of elongated cells with fibers that can contract and relax to uh, bring about movement from one point to another. We have blood tissue and contains red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, among others. So it transports many substances, including gases, metabolic wastes and protects the body against infection. For instance, the red blood cells transport oxygen and nutrients to tissues as well as transporting uh, waste products of metabolism to their sites of removal. The red blood cell or the white blood cell defends the body against infection as we had discussed earlier. The platelets uh, prevents excessive loss of blood when we have a cut or an injury. So there is that hard substance formed immediately on a wound, on a fresh wound. It is because of the platelets to help prevent excessive blood and even entry of infection into our bodies. Then connective tissue and contains strong fibers that connect other tissues and organs so that they are held in position. We move to tissue types in plants and they include the epidermal tissue. So it is also a single layer of cells just as the epithelial uh, tissue in animals and its role is to cover outer surface. It protects the inner tissues of plants from mechanical damage as well as infection. We move to the palisade tissue, and it is a group of cells rich in chloroplast containing chlorophyll. It has sites for the absorption of light energy and manufacture of food by photosynthesis. We move to the parenchyma tissue and consists of thin walled, irregularly shaped cells. They form packaging and storage sites. 
So we have the vascular bundle also and has the phloem and the xylem. Xylem conducts or transports water and mineral salts up the plant to the leaves from the soil. So, whereas the phloem transports manufactured food from the leaves to all parts of the plant. The other part is the meristematic tissue and has actively dividing cells at growing regions of the plant. For example, the shoot tip and the root tips. So, because of the actively dividing cells present at the apical meristem, growth and root uh, growth is faster in the roots, uh, in the tips of roots and shoots. The lateral meristem brings about secondary thickening or secondary growth. The plant is able to increase in width, but for apical meristem, the plant is increasing in height. We move to the organs, and an organ is a distinct part of organism made up of a group of tissues specialized to perform one or more specific functions. For example, the heart, lungs, kidneys, and the brain in mammals. For plants, we have the roots, stems, leaves, and even fruits. The organ system so it refers to when several organs whose functions are coordinated and synchronized to bring out about effective action in living organism. For example, we have the digestive system made up of several organs like the mouth, the small intestine, large intestine, uh, liver, pancreas, among other things to form the digestive system. We have the excretory system containing of the kidney, the bladder, among other parts. Nervous system contains the nerves, as we had seen earlier, the nerve cell, the brain, spinal cord, among those. So they are made up of those parts or organs so that they are coordinated to bring about an effective action in living organism. We have transport and circulatory system. In uh, The circulatory system is made up of heart in animals and also the blood vessels. And, and of course, among the cells such as the red blood cells that transport oxygen. In plants, uh, the transport system is made up of the roots and other parts that transport substances. So that marks the end of this topic of the cell. I believe you enjoyed and you have learned something. But make sure you finish this assignment.